You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by NewTek, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey folks, welcome back to our continuing coverage here at CES 2014 in Las Vegas. I'm John P. And I'm Derek Kessler. And we've got a lot of good stuff coming at you today. We do. Good stuff. You you just came back to replace Renee as yes, I did. co-host of the show. I Have you been running around all day doing stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's CES. If you're not running around, you're not doing it right. That's right. That's true. Well, speaking of people who are running around, we actually had Richard run over here to join us from Broadcom. How are you doing? I had to, to, to run all the way across the South Hall. And very quick <laughs> about it as well. Doing well, thank you very that, much. That was good, uh, good planning on our part. It, it right? was, like it was just, very convenient, except we were on the opposite side of South Hall. The South Hall is very, very long, as you know. That is. is true, it's like a mile long, but right. it could have been worse. You could have been like in the North Hall. That, that that's one. true, I still got my aerob aerobics in. So <laughs> right, <was> yeah. <laughs> so how are you doing? What's going on over at the Broadcom booth today? Uh, there's so many things exciting happening with Broadcom these days. The, the technology revolutions for electronics, whether in the home and the automobile with mobile devices, connectivity, wireless connectivity, wired connectivity is just exploding everywhere. And so we're just very happy to enjoy the ability to help serve the market and develop really cool products for consumers. Let's talk about some of those products. So some people are thinking Broadcom, I know that name. I had a chip from them in the laptop. Yeah, why do I know that name? What kind of things are, where do we find Broadcom? People usually see our name when it comes up on your PC and you see Broadcom flash because we're the ethernet device in most PCs out there. Right. We're also the wireless connectivity, Bluetooth, wireless LAN, now near field communications, GNSS, in most of your mobile phones, smartphones, tablet devices, smart TVs, TVs, most of the consumer products that you're using, the new wearables that are coming out, Bluetooth Smart and so forth, most of that technology is being driven by Broadcom from a wired and wireless connectivity standpoint. I know that um, a lot of the new uh, phones, they even have a little Broadcom sticker. Like it's a tiny little sticker right on the back of the, have you ever noticed that? No. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. You pull up, you know, they, they put the little stick, just like the little Intel inside sticker yeah. that comes on like every laptop ever made, there's a little Broadcom sticker on there too. So w let's talk about some of the trends that we're seeing in, uh, you know, wh what kind of new things are being developed in like the wireless space for phones. W what have you been seeing in that space? So within the, the phone space, and my focus is automotive these days, which is running parallel to what's happening in the mobile phone, smartphone space. Because it's all integrating. But right. Exactly, so you're having a need for speed. That's why 5G Wi-Fi, which is the 802.11 AC standard allows you know, three or 400 megabits per second of, of, of media streaming over wireless LAN is being deployed throughout devices. Um, higher higher, um, higher um, bandwidth two by two devices being employed into tablets and so forth. So that need for speed is continuing in mobile devices. And now that's starting to happen in automotive applications as well. You're seeing near, near field communications to be able to more easily pair your devices by basically touching them together or use your phone for mobile commerce. You're seeing location services deploy globally with um, GPS, other satellite systems like GLONASS, now Beidou, eventually Galileo in Europe, where you've got many satellites that you can connect into and be able to get immediate location-based services, geofencing and so forth to be able to track yourself or your items. And the big trend right now is the Internet of Things, where all these devices, smartphones, tablets, wearables, your washer and dryer, your appliances, your automobiles are all starting to be networked back within the Internet and with each other. Really cool things are happening in that respect. We've had uh, GM come on the show, and I think we've got a couple other manufacturers uh, lined up that are talking about uh, exactly this kind of stuff. Uh, they're putting, they're, they're making big announcements about 4G in the car. They're putting hot spots in the car. So clearly, we're expecting now that uh, the car becomes just a central hub for all of this wireless uh, stuff going on. I guess. Absolutely, the car is becoming your next mobile device. I mean, there was the smartphone revolution that evolved into tablets. Concurrently, the cars and phones are already talking to each other over Bluetooth, and Bluetooth has been deployed you know, pretty much throughout the automotive industry. But now the car is looking like a tablet on wheels and becoming, again, your next um, personal mobile device. It's just a very large mobile device. Your 4G, it'll be, it'll be part of your data plan. You'll have your car, your tablet, your phone, all part of the same system. Just a line item sharing your bandwidth. Yeah. Exactly, and consumers expect the same technology that they're able to get in their tablet or their smartphone, they expect that now in their automobile. 
And so that's driving display technologies, high resolution displays, touch screens in the vehicles, and of course all your connectivity, 5G Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Smart, um, near field communications, 4G, um, GNSS location based services, all evolving around the vehicle. So the car again becomes almost like that tablet on wheels, almost like a living room on wheels for as much time as we spend in the vehicle. So that's a huge macro trend that really evolved from the um, smartphone and now into the vehicle. The other macro trend truly though is the internet of, internet of things. So all these devices are talking to each other. Could it be your wearable bracelets that's tracking your, um, your, your, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your glucose, maybe one day your alcohol level count. Nice, you know, yeah. And it communicates that right to your car so you're able to, to display and see how, your, how your, your body is tracking. Maybe it's connecting to a person walking across the street. So they're walking across your bumper and your car knows, oh, there's a human there and they're using Bluetooth smart or wireless LAN to be able to detect that person's in that space and the car might want to stop right now before That's very an interesting. Accident happens. I, yeah, yeah. I, and you, you were just talking about uh, some other kind of interesting stuff Ford was doing with Yeah, I was the, with a Ford earlier today and they're using uh, car to car communications to communicate, uh, you know, like the car five cars ahead of you is slamming on its brakes and bouncing back through to your car so that you don't have that chain reaction of cars Absolutely. running into each other. Now, a, a car has to be a bit of a challenging space to integrate this kind of technology into. You know, it has to deal with extreme temp more extreme temperatures than our smartphones and tablets and laptops, and it's moving at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. What, what kind of challenges do you have to overcome to fit this stuff in and make it work as safely and effectively and efficiently in a car? Well, safety is the big thing for automotive. So right. Everything's driven by safety. Yeah, but fundamentally from a technology standpoint, there are automotive requirements, which are wider temperature range. But the silicon technology today is all designed for that anyway. So it's, it's mainly going through the automotive requirements from a testing standpoint to certify, because cars are going to live 10 to 15 years. They're not mm -hmm. like your smartphone, which has got a two or three year cycle or so forth. So it's got to be on the road a long time. That's very important. And they have to We're, meet stringent federal kind of exactly. requirements. Exactly, reliability, right? quality, meeting federal requirements, meeting safety requirements, that's all critical. Now when you get into the vehicle, it's actually V2X is what the industry is looking at. And the X could be vehicle to vehicle, could be vehicle to infrastructure, stop signs, stop lights, toll monitors. It could be vehicle to person, whether they're a passenger, they're wearable, or pedestrian. So you want to make sure you don't have that accident in the street. The technologies that we're bringing into the smartphone and tablet and now into the vehicle can all be leveraged within these applications. Some of it's very straightforward. What you're doing from a vehicle to person, it's the same things you're doing, you know, whether you're monitoring your bracelet with your phone, you can monitor it with your car. You want to detect a person's location in front of your car, that's, those, tech, those applications are coming and they're not that challenging, to be honest. Um, from an infrastructural standpoint, it's more economic challenges to put wireless devices and stop signs and stop lights, but that's going to happen one day. You'll be coming into a school zone and all of a sudden your car will tell you, it's eight o'clock, it's time when children are present, the speed limit just dropped to 25 miles an hour. You know what would be really interesting would be if you could enter a speed zone and the car would basically force you to go the speed limit the in that area. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like it just, you're not going I, past. Now that 15. raises all kinds of implications, but techno technologically speaking, technologically it's, it's available it's, today. It could I mean, happen. Yeah. Well, you could do it today. Yeah. And technologically, I mean, it's going to happen. Autonomous vehicles yep. are the path of the future. That's true. And the way autonomy, you know, autonomy in vehicles will happen is the simple things like that: slowing your vehicle down for you, mm -hmm. avoiding an accident, mm -hmm. parking the car by itself well, I before already, you yeah. actually just give you know, my car. Hands if free. Uh, you know, it's got the lane to avoid lane right. detection and. Mm -hmm. If, if I let go of the steering wheel and I'm drifting out, it will steer back in. I mean, it warns you and it wants right, you to right, get right. the steering, but it will push you back into right. the right position. And that's, I guess, how it begins. Right. You but know, one comment that somebody made, uh, uh, Jaybird said, I gave up on wireless specifically for my media streaming and went wired with a one gigabit switch. I think that uh, when we think about wireless, whether it's Bluetooth or any other Wi-Fi, you know, one of the things that we're frustrated by is, is speed, you know, transmission rates. They're not the same as they are with wired and or even if you could achieve the theoretically the same. Sometimes we're dealing with a lot of uh, latency and jitter and things that seems like. What are you thinking about in terms of uh, 
bandwidth and, and improvements in speed and performance in the future? What are we going to be Well, seeing? several things are happening, wired and wireless. Yep. So within vehicle networks, so we, we're providing wireless LAN, Bluetooth, NFC, all the communication technologies. But when the vehicle network backbone that connects in surround view cameras, connect in rear seat entertainment, we're actually bringing in ethernet technology. Oh, nice. It's a Broadcom specific technology called Broader Reach that we've introduced into other markets years ago. Now we brought it into automotive because it, it has some nice features. It meets the EMC requirements, which regular ethernet does not. It allows you to run all your communications over a two wire unshielded pair very inexpensive, very lightweight. You can run power over that as well to power, say, external camera modules yep. and so forth. So as all these cameras come in the vehicle, we're using this broader reach ethernet technology to network back in, and that's 100 megabit per second. Which is would that be, would, would those be like IP cameras or just like even normal cameras but running, using that ethernet it, it, cable? It, 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 it's exactly, like the same thing you're running in your home over, over ethernet, you, you can run in the vehicle as well. Gotcha. And, and that's moving actually from 100 megabit per second, which is the current technology, that's going to go gigabit pretty soon. Yeah. Mainly you need the bandwidth, because it's very scalable, because all the different cameras are going to be connecting into the vehicle. From a wireless standpoint, with the 802.11ac technology, the Broadcom's 5G uh, Wi-Fi technology, that's now 433 megabit per second fire rate for a one by one, which is one antenna, one's receive, one, one, one um, transmit. But you could double up on that. You go two by two and you can double that. And that's what's happening in routers and switchers, or two by two and three by three. The phones are all going one by one, the cars are going one by one, 11 AC. Effective bandwidth is looking 300 megabit per second. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of bandwidth, that's not bad. And then, then tablets are starting to go two by two. So that bandwidth is increasing all the time within both wired and wireless communications. And, that, and that'll benefit audio and video applications in yep. the vehicle. Yeah. You out of questions? I'm out of questions. <laughs> I'm not. I could go all day. You can go all day? I could, because I love this kind of stuff. And yeah. in, in my house, I've implemented a number of different technologies. Um, we've got, we've put in a wireless mesh network. Oops. We also have a gigabit ethernet backbone. And I also, one thing we didn't really touch on is we've implemented power over ethernet in our home that, uh, that, that connects some of these things, like some of these Wi-Fi hotspots, and also you could connect IP cameras over uh, power over ethernet, but there's some convergence that needs to take place so that like basically every port on every switch could be PoE enabled or not, you know. Yeah. And the, uh, we're not, we're, everything isn't perfectly synced together. I wish, I, my dream would be there would be one technology that we could just have that would work for everything, but clearly we're not going to have that. Not no, and, soon. You're, and you're not going to. You know, I mean, from a say a wired communication of the car, Ethernet is for high bandwidth stuff, but yep. there's other technologies for you know for for lower bandwidth stuff yep. that works just fine. Yep. From a wireless communications, what wireless LAN does is different from what Bluetooth does, which is different from what um, NFC technology does. Right. So they, they live in different places. Bluetooth smart technology, where you focus on low power. You know, they, they have their own little niches. Now fundamentally, they're all the same type of technology using yeah. the same type of silicon, very similar radio parts, a lot of shared technology, and that allows us to reduce cost over time for the consumer, for the automaker, for the industry as a whole, but you need the flavors of the technology to, yeah. you know, to extend range or extend speed or, or reduce power or, and so forth. That's true. Why, you know, I shouldn't be complaining. We do just have one we do have one protocol, let's say, like you know, TCP/IP, that we can send in 15 different manners. Exactly. So, really, we are. We do have standards and everything. It's just the uh, the very last little that you last know, jump. Yeah, the last piece. We need multiple connection points. Well, thank you so much for coming sure on thing. and thanks discussing for, thanks it with us. Thanks for having us today, and it was good, good talking with you. Yeah, nice chatting with you too. Okay. okay, guys, thanks for sticking around for more coverage here. We'll be right back. We've got lots of extra stuff. Also, don't forget, we've got giveaways. If you go to geekbeat.tv forward slash giveaway. We've got all kinds of goodies for you there too. So stick around. We'll be back with more. Thanks right. again.